My favorite part of Ellie's character is her untied shoelace. Oh yeah! Which no one's commented on yet, and I'm really upset because I made us reshoot a scene after I got the idea mm -hmm. about her untied shoelace. Because for me, it's like whenever you see someone's untied shoelace, you get a little nervous, maybe. Yeah. That they're gonna get. People her. were nervous on set too. They were like, yeah. well, they really? your shoe. I'm like, no, Darren's making me yeah, have it on. It's late. Darren. Hi, I'm Darren Aronofsky. Hi, I'm Sadie Sink. And, and this, this is, is Notes on a Scene. scene. <laughs> this is the, Notes on the Scene. For the whale. For the whale. Maybe someone else finds you attractive. Maybe my dad finds you attractive. I really wish You know, it's so easy to make you uncomfortable. It's honestly, it's a little sad. The scene we're gonna do today is Sadie is totally toying with Ty mm -hmm. Thomas, who is a missionary visiting her dad. She knows a secret about him. And I think this whole scene is just her being a master manipulator and trying to get that secret out of him. Do you find me attractive? Because I'm not attracted to you at all. Just so you know. I'm not trying to be mean or anything. I just don't think you're very good looking or interesting or intelligent. Do you remember we added that line? Mm -hmm. Was it your idea? Do no, you Sam that? added it. Sa Sam Hunter, but our writer. The, at the end of it, I don't find you intelligent or very good looking. Yeah, yeah. But I love it because Sadie is one of the really nicer people I've met and she plays such a mean, mean person. Do you think your character's mean? Yeah, but it's, I think she's just, she's honest. Yes, it's interesting. I think as an actor, you have to like your character. When I did Requiem for a Dream with Ellen Burstyn, I said her character was stupid, which was a bad word to use. And she said, oh, she was, she's not stupid, she's simple. And she taught me with that lesson that's very important that the actor actually has mm -hmm. to have compassion for their own mm -hmm. character. Or intelligent. Oh my God, grow up. Maybe someone else finds you attractive. Maybe my dad finds you attractive. For me, one of the big challenges of the movie was how to keep the film moving and interesting. Charlie, who's here and plays a guy who doesn't move that much, he's kind of the son of the movie. And everyone else is kind of a little moon or a little satellite. And so I knew the whole time that there would be tons of movement and how we would basically want to capture all of these different characters moving around the sun. But you could see, so when she does a big move, we cut out to a wide shot and the camera does a huge slide across. What that does is it sets up a new line between the characters. Kind of the brilliant thing that the production designer did early on was by putting the couch in the middle of the room. If you think about most living rooms you go into, the couch is up against the wall, but the designer somehow figured out, okay, let's put the couch in the middle, and that allowed us to circle him, you know, back to that sun and mm -hmm. satellite metaphor. From the moment Ellie first steps into Charlie's apartment, I think she just makes herself right at home. Charlie would be on this couch, and we staged it to where Ellie would kind of walk behind the couch, where he couldn't necessarily move to see her. So it was like really interesting because it was like it, you could do it. I was, it was like, like you were there. Yeah, yeah. And I, so, and then but I'm he's back a big here. guy, and it's like so there, and then and I linger it, here, and it became. And she kind of <laughs> just kept taunting him over and over again. And that was that was some blocking we figured out in the rehearsal room. Mm -hmm. Basically, we set up the camera back here and was like kind of moving around as if we were her POV, and he was barely able to see her the whole time, and it was just very, very un uncomfortable mm -hmm. and a great moment. Ellie, she was a cat playing with yarn. This was like my one of my favorite Ellie scenes, just because all of her scenes before this are with Charlie, and their dynamic is very specific. With this, it's kind of like you get to see her in the wild, maybe how she interacts with her peers or just yeah. anyone. Oh my God, grow up. Maybe someone else finds you attractive. Charlie's an English teacher and very educated man. So the bookshelves were really important, but also super important to us were the books themselves. Our set dresser actually brought her library, which was so super impressive library and decorated. Normally when you do a movie, you just rent a bunch of books and they're just nonsense books, but actually all of this was the great literature. So it was kind of fun as the crew was setting up, you could kind of grab any book off the shelf and read a really fantastic yeah. poem before putting it back. Maybe someone else finds you attractive. Maybe my dad finds you attractive. I really wish that. You know, it's so easy to make you uncomfortable. We had to figure out a way to not allow Thomas to escape the scene. So that's why we did this kind of crazy fast move across 
was to basically cut off his escape. And this was one of my favorite things you did was like your total descent and attack. This is the lioness coming after the uh, the baby zebra. You know, it's so easy to make you uncomfortable. It's honestly, zebra. it's a little sad. You can cash that out. Then she slowly, the music cues in as she starts to do her descent on the zebra. Here she comes. And she knows exactly what's going on. And he's, he's clueless. Mm. My parents thought I was getting high. Getting high while I went to sing for the church. Didn't you figure that out, the leaning I in? was probably, you, you know what? I was yeah. probably like leaning over it, like in between a scene or something. And right. Maybe... And then maybe I saw that and was like, let's yeah. use that. And yeah, and how I shot it was, you know, we put the camera over your shoulder. So it's like the descent, your POV. And then of course, there's a camera tracking back on your close up. That was all the coverage we wanted. before Thomas shows up. She's given her dad some Ambien. So he's asleep and she's smoking pot in his living room. Thomas comes in and he expresses to her that he's had an issue with pot in the past. And Ellie's like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna make him smoke then. And that's kind of her mission. It's interesting because the play was written 10 years ago. Wasn't the line originally was, oh, I know what it is. It's not like- It's not like I'm, it's not like I'm smoking, smoking crack, crack or anything. It was originally crack in the script. And I was like, you know, it's 10 years. Crack is really <laughs> not, you know, crack is whack, doesn't exist anymore. My parents knew I was getting high. Getting high while I went to sing for the church. You're not from New Life. So that's his big secret, that she has known this whole scene and hasn't revealed to him. So the whole scene she's playing, waiting to, to crush Find him. Find the right moment. You're not from New Life. What? There's a kid in the grade below me who goes there. He told me that they stopped doing door-to-door -door stuff last year. Thomas is a missionary from a church called New Life uh, that's based on Sam Hunter's uh, upbringing in Idaho, where this is based. Sam Hunter's our writer. New Life, I guess, is a little controversial amongst a lot of the players in the movie. Mm -hmm. Some people think it's kind of culty. Charlie has a real big history of it. That's part of the um, discovery of the film. And Ellie also knows what She just what has is. strong opinions on she, religion, I think, on, in on general. Religion. He told me that they stopped doing door-to-door -door stuff last year and some woman was out preaching or whatever and a guy answered the door with no clothes on. There, the ring, the ring. Okay, yeah. so there's this ring that I got to keep. It's like a bird's claw, kind of it, like it wrapping a, around. Kind of a talon, wasn't yes, it? Yes, and it like wrapped around on both ends. Right, yeah. Danny had this whole like kind of like reference to Ellie's character as a whole. Danny Glicker. The costume designer. Yes. He, he had so many amazing ideas that she was this like siren of some sort. Oh wow. That was on the, all of his mood boards. And then he had this ring that was like a siren's claw. Right, taking down. Well, yeah. but that's also the cat mm -hmm. playing with the yarn. Do you remember anything about the plaid where we came with that or any of that? With every scene really, I think, Ellie is kind of emotionally maybe shedding a little bit of a layer and then also with the clothes, of course. Yeah. So like she keeps her jacket and her backpack on in the first scene. By the right. second scene, she has like the jacket off, but she's still in dark clothing, mostly reds. And then in this scene, it, she brings a little bit more warmth. There's yeah. a little bit of the yellow. And what, one thing Maddie Libatica, our DP was doing is she's, if you look here, she's very much lit with cold light while she has a bunch of warm light here. Mm -hmm. And he was really conscious of keeping her in the cold Old lights, meaning cooler blue, less friendly lights early in the film, and moving her more and more to the warm. And some woman was out preaching or whatever, and a guy answered the door with no clothes on. I gotta go. Who were you really? That was one of the last shots that I did in the movie. I think that who were you really? We, like well, we, we went had back, to come back and to we it. did it. Well, we didn't have that moment. I gotta go. Who were you really? Mm -hmm. So that was actually shot out of order. It was a pickup. And this close up on Ellie. And like the who are you really that line and then you do it from this angle and with the music and it feels right. like oh like suspenseful right and like, right 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 so this shot like scared me when i saw it <laughs> i was like jeez i gotta go who were you really i love this i love i love it i tell you ty has a very good comedic sense mm -hmm. and there's a lot of male actors that won't act silly and vulnerable like yeah. that and he's very very open-hearted to embarrass himself mm -hmm. basically if you look at that little waddle he does it's just so, so funny good. it's so, so funny good. it's just perfect finding ty was was really hard 
we, we were really struggling with it. And we had some other good actors, but they were older. They were in their late 20s. Mm-hmm. And the potential of a romance between Thomas and Ellie, I think, was important. So I wanted to find someone who was a contemporary. Right before we were about to start rehearse, Mary Vernu, our casting director, was like, oh, there's this one guy, Ty Simpkins. He was a child actor, but he hadn't acted in a while. He was kind of taking a break from it for a while. But he got on tape. And the next day he got on a plane and joined us in New York where we shot the film and he was great. Come on, just tell me. Why do you care? Because I think we have a blossoming friendship. At this point, you have two actors on either side of the door. It was really a lot of fun to shoot. So you have basically, (laughs) they both sit down and they kind of are on opposite sides where actors are communicating in a very, very kind of intimate conversation that's very, very close, but never look at each other and they're Mm -mm. not in the same room, which is fun. I challenge you to find another role like that in your long career yet to come where you get to do that again. (laughs) Why do you care? Because I think we have a blossoming friendship. One of the most impressive things that Sadie Sink does in The Whale is she is at a different speed than every other actor. She's like working so quickly, her mind is so rich and so complicated that, you know, you watch a movie maybe a thousand times. I'll still be watching the film and see little moves and surfs and weaves and bobs that her character does and takes. That was impressive is to, just to see that the character could be played with that much sensitivity and variation. With Ellie, she kind of turns to like aggression as, as this sort of kind of coping mechanism, justifying that. That was probably the biggest challenge, especially with some of her scenes with the dad. Like, you know, she drugs him. Why did she do that? Oh, it's because he was complimenting her, telling her how amazing she was. And I remember like reading it and getting so frustrated with it at first. It's like, he's such a great like, guy. He's so amazing. And Oh, she was, she was hurt by him yeah. in a real way. And he was an incredibly selfish father. Justified. Why you're upset, for but, sure. but definitely. But I, get, I get very defensive over Ellie. As you should. And But I think by the end, you see Ellie. Ellie is changed by Charlie. And that's why the film has hope. And the film delivers, I think, on hope through what Charlie gives to his daughter. 